A landlord in Connecticut is the perfect example of everything that went wrong due to the eviction moratorium. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of the state of Connecticut. And as you know, Connecticut is one of the most tenant-friendly states in the entire country. A lot of the states up on the East Coast, they're very, very tenant-friendly, and Connecticut is definitely one of them. So the landlords there were really suffering as the federal eviction moratorium and then their state eviction moratoriums were going on. So this article is actually going over the story of a landlord who basically, they're a small landlord, they only own one property, and suffered all of the worst effects of this eviction moratorium and this is the perfect sort of example that i like to show because it shows just how bad it can get for landlords out there but before i get into the article go ahead hit the like and subscribe button maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this article after after i get through the whole thing okay just let me know what you think of this landlord's story you know is it right that a landlord had to go through this sort of mess is it right that the landlord faces possibly losing their property because of everything that happened i don't think it is but let me know what you think so this article comes from nbcconnecticut.com and it says who doesn't pay their rent tenants landlord struggle as eviction moratorium ends and let's get into it i mean i've already read the article and i'm not very happy with what it's saying and i really do feel for this landlord with no more eviction moratorium the rent has finally come due but for one landlord it may be too late to know i worked my whole life with my kids as a single mom killing myself putting money into into this house into their home into our home and to have the bank repo it it kills me taylor walsh told nbc connecticut walsh rented her portland home to someone who's now in default i'm not a professional landlord i'm just a lady with an extra house walsh said and that's the case for most small landlords okay they are not uh, full-time professional real estate investors okay they are part-time people they may own one maybe two additional houses on top of the one that they live in right now okay and a lot of the times it's the house that they used to live in they just moved out and instead of selling the place they turned it into a rental now i don't like that we were lumped in with all these you know big large corporate landlords when the eviction moratoriums took place but that's exactly what happened and so when i tell people hey you know these landlord laws they're really hurting the small landlords they need to listen okay they need to understand that small landlords we're working full-time jobs a lot of the time i mean i just did a poll and the grand majority of the people who you know watch this channel they are small landlords who work full-time jobs in fields that are un related to uh, real estate so that means that the grand majority of people aren't you know the full-time investors who watch this channel and I, I think that's a good reflection of landlords as a whole Walsh's tenant John Jacobson jr. and his family will be evicted in a few weeks that's good news it's a great neighborhood great place for the kids to go to school Jacobson said Jacobson admits he owes thousands of dollars in rent. He said he stopped paying because he found mold in the bathroom and that he took it upon himself to try and repair the problem. Why am I going to pay to live in a house I'm fixing myself and paying or doing things that would have cost her thousands and thousands of dollars to do, he said. Well, you're going to pay because she needs that money so that she can actually fix the problem, okay? And I already know what, what it says further in this article, so let me just get into it. Even though Walsh sent someone to fix the mold, Jacobson didn't want to let them in because he was nervous about COVID-19. She wanted to just call one of her friends to come fix it, Jacobson said. I told her I didn't feel comfortable with that. So keep in mind what I just read, okay? He said he didn't pay the rent because she wouldn't fix the mold problem. But then he himself admits that she sent somebody over there to fix the mold problem. So basically this guy, he's taking advantage of the situation. He was taking advantage of the eviction moratorium to not pay rent. And guess what? Finally, this eviction moratorium is over. Finally, she's going to be able to evict. But unfortunately for her, it's too late. 
okay? It's too late because she can't get this money back from this tenant. And I'm going to explain exactly why because that's also covered in this article. The first couple of months, I was paying the mortgage and hoping things were going to right itself, Walsh said. That didn't happen, so Walsh got the bank to delay collecting the mortgage. That agreement ends on November 1st when the full amount, $23,000, is due. It's not really fair, you know, because I feel like I've done all the right things. And who doesn't pay their rent, Walsh said. So basically she was able to get forbearance okay through the bank so the way forbearance works is the bank doesn't collect your rent but when the forbearance period is over they want all of the money that you're owed which would be fine if the tenant was able to actually pay that rent pay what is owed back to the landlord but in this case that's not what happened okay the tenant couldn't pay that amount back and now the tenant is being evicted from the property which is fine now, normally, you know, a large landlord, etc., would have huge amounts of emergency reserves. And this lady herself even had enough reserves to last several months and hoping that things would be able to correct themselves, but she couldn't last forever. She only has one property, okay? So, I mean, she was put in a really bad situation. Now she owes $23,000 to this mortgage company because her forbearance period is over. She doesn't have $23,000 to pay them back. <laughs> Come on. I mean, really? This tenant completely screwed this lady over and doesn't even care. It doesn't even care. Walsh said she helped them apply to Unite CT, the rental assistance program, but they didn't qualify. Said that we made too much based off our last taxes, Jacobson said. Where does that leave Walsh? So they didn't pay their rent. They don't have to pay their rent. So I'm in this giant pickle, Walsh said. Yeah, keep in mind what I said about rental assistance programs before, okay? Now, these people didn't qualify for the rental assistance program because they made too much money. And as I said before, you know, uh, if you make more than 80% of the median area income, then you can't qualify for the rental assistance program. So basically, you have in place an uh, eviction moratorium, either the state or the federal one, and it's preventing these people from being evicted for however long, okay? These people owe tens of thousands of dollars to this lady, and guess what? They are not even eligible to be <laughs> getting rental assistance. So. This is the textbook definition. This case right here, the one that I'm reading in this article is the textbook definition of unconstitutional taking of private property without just compensation, a Fifth Amendment violation. And, you know, I, I hope this lady gets a lawyer and sues the heck out of the state government, out of the federal government, and this tenant, of course, too, because they're the ones who weren't paying. Walsh said they did pay a month and a half of rent, but owe her thousands of dollars. We do owe a good amount of money for sure, Jacobson said. Walsh was initially torn about keeping the house as a rental. Renting it to a lovely family, they were expecting a baby, you know. It just seems like a family should be in the house, Walsh said. But now she might not be able to keep it. The bank is just going to end up taking it from me because I can't pay, Walsh said, added. Evictions have been increasing statewide since the end of September. Clients who have an eviction on their record, especially during the COVID emergency, cannot find another place to rent, Aaron Kimple, executive director of the Connecticut Fair Housing Center, said. Evictions in September were the highest since March 2020. And, you know, the article at this point starts going over, you know, oh, you know, the stuff about tenants being evicted and not them not being able to find a place. What about this landlord? Okay. They didn't compensate this landlord for keeping these people in the house for free. Okay, these people at this point, you know, they need to just go. And I'm glad that at least they were able to get evicted and get through the eviction court, get these people out of this property because there is no reason for any of this to have happened in the first place. So this is why I read this article. This, this is about the most frustrating situation I could even think of. You know, if I was this 
landlord, I mean, I, I mean, just throw your hands up in despair because you are facing a lot of really bad stuff. And, you know, she's probably going to just have to sell the place to pay back the bank because she owes the bank so much money. She wasn't getting any income. She was paying out of her own pocket, probably depleted her savings completely. You know, the tenant didn't qualify for rental assistance and she just got completely screwed by all this government crap. Okay, it was government crap that they put in place thinking, oh, we got to help these people. And they just screwed over the landlord. And she is the perfect example of that. So, yeah, good article. I really feel for this lady. And let's hope that this isn't, you know, ever going to happen again. Let's hope they never put these sort of eviction moratoriums in place again.